try. Live streams are not getting sent off anymore. I'll give it a minute for people to come in here and talk about what we're going to talk about. Oh, good, it's up. All right, now I can do this. Uh, mute this. All right, so now I can see comments. I can talk. I don't know how many of you guys are actually on at this hour. Uh, basically, I just got done working on the ambulance, and I'm in here and wanted to do a live. I haven't done one in a while. Ooh, we got someone here. Hi. Um, anyhow, I haven't done a live in a while, and... Uh, Ooh, there's a delay there. I wanted to do one. And so part of this live is I wanted to talk about design and rigs and nomad life and other fun stuff and have a subject to talk about. Feel free to comment. I'm actually about two second delay between my phone and my computer that's down below here so I can actually pay attention to the comments a lot better than what I have in the past. So hopefully this will work out good. Anyhow, so how to become a nomad. Yeah, that was a random one. Basically, if you want a full-time or not full-time, how do you go about picking your rig? How do you figure out what size rig you need? Just some general considerations. Ohio, hey guys. Oh, very nice. That, that works out good because I can see you guys down below. So, anyhow, so, trying to say, oh, from California. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, I wish I was in California right now. Well, not California. This southern Arizona would have been nice to be down there. So, anyhow, how do you figure out your space? Have you guys ever, I, some of you guys are in your rigs right now, but some of you are in your houses. So, I was just curious, how would you guys figure out going about figuring out your minimum space for living in a mobile vehicle. And I'm, I know this subject has been hit on several times. What I did whenever I was first thinking about building the bus, I was living in an apartment as a little studio apartment. I had a, a living room and I had my bedroom and I was splitting that with a friend to keep rent down low. And so I had the living room. That's big open space. Most rigs aren't bigger than that space. You know, buses are, but, you know, I, I, uh, well, I figured what my minimum was. Hi, G. From Missouri. Um, my minimum at the time, whenever I was first designing, was the bus. 40 foot. I didn't think I could, well, I thought I could do less, but I could not afford, uh, to go smaller, because when you go smaller, you actually go uh the price goes up for some reason but a big old bus seems to be cheap apparently no one wants to drive a big old bus around and they are a challenge to drive that's for sure uh you would say start small and gradually start to pare down uh my stuff yeah you definitely do that but i mean I lived in an apartment, so I always had stuff. And you ever notice if you ever started moving from apartment to apartment, you start getting rid of a lot of that stuff anyhow, because otherwise you got to move it all, and that's a lot to move. But basically what I did in my apartment was I moved all the furniture to the side and masking tape or something like that on the carpet to square out your space to figure out kind of how the space feels. And then, good in the evening... Yes. Two Connect 2000s. Ah, good evening. Yeah, so anyhow, so you draw out basically the maximum width of the inside of your vehicle. And, well, the maximum outside width is going to be no wider than 8 feet. It might be 8 feet 6 inches. But you're going to have probably 3 to 6 inches of insulation. So I always base my measurements on seven feet wide and then if you have a little extra space you have a little extra space but it's better to have extra space than not enough space so I draw a square 
And you can't do full 20 feet, but you can do a lot. You can double overlap the space to kind of get the feel for it. So you do a rectangular of your space, 7 feet by however long space you got to work with. And you can figure out how it feels to move in that space. And, you know, they say make cutouts or, you know, boxes of like your oven and whatever else you're going to do. You draw that out. You can figure out your kitchen layout. So your kitchen triangle between your refrigerator, your stove, and your sink. And those are um, options. Um, they change depending on what rig you are and how you want to do it. There's actually multiple ways. You do not have to do your dishes with soap and water. I have several friends that do their dishes with vinegar and water, and it works just fine. I personally prefer soap and water, but vinegar works great too. So, but some sort of container to do that. Um, let's see. I got a list here now. Okay, so also while you're figuring out the dimensions of everything, you're I'm keeping track of everything. It's been a long day. I've actually been working on the ambulance, and I came in here. I was like, ah, I need to do a live stream. I hadn't done one in forever. So once you figure out kind of how stuff moves around and how you'd move around in the space, you kind of have an idea of what your min minimum and maximum size space that you'd like it to be. And once you have the minimum space or the maximum space figured out, because it varies by how many people you got, you can kind of figure out whether you want a class A, a class B, a class C um, rig. Sorry, I'm starting to come down from working, so brain stopped working. Um, but f first, originally the bus was a class A uh, consideration, but the biggest problem with the bus was my deal breaker for that. And if you guys don't know, I had a school bus that I traveled around the country in for the last two years. Recently sold it and went to the ambulance because I can do some more spaces. But the bus was, I hit my head on the ceiling. It was too short. I got a good deal on it. I think I, well, I got a good deal on it, uh, buying it outright. But the deal breaker was if I couldn't do a roof raise on it, I wasn't going to buy anything more into it. Uh, same thing with the ambulance. That was my deal breaker with the ambulance. And uh, uh, if you look back at my other videos, you know that I did a roof raise on it. Not quite done with it, still working on it, but uh, it's definitely a deal breaker, and that's a whole nother uh, ball of wax. Anyhow, so the bus is what I went with originally, and it worked great for me. It worked exactly how it was designed to go out to BLM land and park in it for two weeks at a time at 100 gallons of water, um, uh, instant hot water heater designed for a house, Full upright sink, double sink, uh, live edge uh, wood sink, and I actually built the sink extra higher. I actually raised it up about a foot. After doing a lot of research, the average height of a person is about the average cabinet height. So I'm a bit taller than the average person. I'm about a foot higher, so I raised the actual countertop where the sink was one foot higher than average which I think is three feet so I went up roughly four feet and now my back didn't hurt whenever I did dish dishes um, which is great it's wonderful because you're going to do di dishes all your chores I can't talk now all your chores follow you out there all your drama follows you out there just if you go out and travel to be around have your stuff taken care of before you go out because it's more complicated out there. A lot. Okay, back to uh, the whole discussion. Okay, figure out size. Okay, so when you, after you figure out your size, you got to figure out, do you want to tow a rig? Um, or do you want a Class A? Um, towing rig, like a trailer, you get to have your tow vehicle. And you have your trailer. And the, the, the positive of that is you can park, park your trailer anywhere that allows you to park there. And you can go explore in your tow vehicle. 
which is awesome. The downside of that is backing a trailer. Not not guaranteed you're going to have to back a trailer, but the uh, other benefits of doing that is uh, your tow vehicle, it craps out on you, you just buy another tow vehicle and your house is left alone. Um, versus if you got a Class A or a um, RV, excuse me, if you guys had a regular RV and something happens to that engine, you're tied to that engine. Whether you get it replaced or have to buy a new one or have to go to another rig, you're also moving your entire house inside that rig. So, um, for me, and not that I have a problem with towing stuff, because I'm totally okay with towing and backing a trailer up and everything else. It's just a pain in the butt. And I'm not saying that I won't end up with a trailer or a tow behind in my ambulance. But it is nice just to drive. Hop in it and drive like a vehicle. The bus was a little bit more complicated because the bus was longer. And uh, you had to choose your turns and know how wide you can make the turns and all that fun stuff. But uh, whenever I was thinking about the bus or bought the bus a month later I went and worked for a school system and worked for them for three years as a substitute bus driver and got really really good at driving a school bus not that I would recommend it for everyone but it is a nice experience to let them train you and you uh, learn on their dime so yeah let's see where we at here so this is also just kind of a general overview of kind of this. There's actually a lot more in-depth stuff with this, but uh, yeah. All right. So we did tow and motorhome. So next decision, do you want to build or buy? Oh, let's see. Hey, I, I got uh, some uh, cut up there. Me personally, I would on those campers that fit on the frame of the truck. That's what I'd get. Oh, you get one of those campers that fit on the frame of the truck, like the actual, the old style campers. They're hard to find anymore. I like those. They're actually, you know, you can get a four wheel drive, you can drop it off, you can do both of them. Yeah, those are actually a pretty cool design. Um, okay, so anyhow, back to this. Um, build or buy? Do you guys want to build it out and have it all the nicest stuff in it? Or do you want to buy it and just get out there and get going? And I really, I personally like building because I get to make my way the way I want it. And put more space in some of the things I consider more of a luxury slash um, amenities. In all truth, you guys can kind of do it however you guys want. I've known people that live out of their little bitty cars and people that drive big old Class A's with a trailer that they pull behind their car. Um, but personally, for me, I don't like camping anymore. And that's so weird to say because I spent two years traveling around. But for me, it has to have certain luxuries. Um, whenever I was in the bus the first six months, I was parked at a co-worker's place. They let me park there and work on it. And I was living at it there. And uh, I did. I had it hooked to a hose. And all I had was one hose connection for my shower for about six months. It was over summer, so it didn't matter. But October hit. My hot water heater that I did buy, used hot water heater, went out on me. Um, and too cold to take a shower so hot showers is still a luxury but uh, a much needed luxury um, yeah um, so there's let's just let's talk about this there's several ways to get clean as being a nomad good evening Our, hello RV ashes in April um, like I said you can car camp and do stuff you can do sponge baths and that saves you a lot of water um, not my cup of tea. I would rather take long hot showers if I can. But of course there's the other thing where people have created 
showers that can go through a filter system in their rig and take showers for hours or however long. I don't have any experience in that. I'd like to get more experience in that. Um, new hot water system is going to dabble in that a little bit. Um, let's see. Okay, so, sorry, back, we, we went off subject. Like I said, I'm still tired. I just got in from working. If you guys build your rig, um, you should know about the maximums. The, the maximum size your vehicle can be. We can't build our rigs wider than a certain point. We can't build our rigs higher than a certain point. We'll run into problems with the DOT and they'll actually pull our rigs off the ground because, or off the highway because it's uh, illegal, unfortunately. So there is a box we have to fit in. Um, fortunately enough, the boxes are fit in as the size of a semi. So as long as we fit within a certain range of the semis, we're fine. And you can get a lot of rigs in that space. So uh, depending on your state, your maximum height's anywhere from 13 feet to 14 feet. Uh, Oklahoma, where I'm at, is 13.5. I don't want to go any large or any taller than 12 feet, uh, mainly because most bridges, um, now there's a few like uh, what 11foot8.com or whatever, um, 11 foot 8 bridges that will take off the top of your RV or your air conditioner on the top of your, uh, um, uh, let's see, on the top of your uh, RV. Uh, Margie, what happened to your videos earlier? Oh, I have no clue on that one. Um, so, ideally 12 foot's the max height that I want to go. Right now the ambulance is sitting at 11 feet because, well... I want to do a four-wheel drive conversion on it. I don't know if that's going to be feasible right away, but in the future, I want to leave it uh, open. I didn't mean to make it public yet. Oh, yes. It, uh, I want to leave it open for a four-wheel drive conversion on it, which means I need to have room for a six-inch lift on the suspension, so it's going to raise it up six inches with the current tires, and if I go to super singles and uh, bigger tires, I need to add an extra six inches for that. Uh, there's a cat down there. Um, so, 12 foot is right around where I want to stay. There's only been five times I've ever had to turn around in the bus because the bus is right at 12 foot. It might be a little bit over. Hmm. Anyhow, so, but I could go up another foot and a half, or no, two and a half feet uh, with the ambulance and still be safe. So I could actually have room to put Mm, uh, a kayak or something else up there if I wanted so and of course the the width of the ambulance or is uh, eight foot six inches and that's the max I can't go any wider than that anything sticks out beyond that has to be safety and what that means is your mirrors are allowed to stick out beyond that anything that's related to safety and your safety uh, ability to drive can stick out beyond that there's actually rumor stories going around that uh, the bus barn that I worked at is a guy had a pair of dice and he tied it around his mirrors and they was at the edge of it. He liked how they looked. Uh, DOT or a um, sheriff pulled them over and wrote them over with a ticket, which is semis are a lot of money. Basically because those dice were not considered safety equipment, it threw them over with and he got in trouble. So you definitely don't want to go over um, that. Um, let's see. So length. You know, you can get... Mm, the ambulance is 23 feet long. You can get shorter if you go with a car, uh, RV, um, uh, kind of thing. You can also go as long as 40 feet. Most school buses are 40 feet. And if you go with a Greyhound, they're about 55 feet. Um the ambulance, you can pretty much hop in and drive like any short or oversized pickup. <laughs> um, but the longer vehicle uh, you go, like uh, Class A style, the more skilled you have to practice at driving or be at driving because you have to make it around a corner and some of those sharp corners um, you will do a curb check you will 
jump that curb and go over that curb and hopefully that's all you do and you don't find anything over there. The other thing is whenever you turn uh, large vehicles like that, like a Class A or uh, any vehicle in general, but you're going to have a tail swing. So whatever is behind the tires back, it will actually, before your vehicle turns, it will actually go over to the left before it comes back. So if you have someone in a really tight vehicle where you're parked like next to each other, if like a, a 40 foot bus has a three foot tail swing. So your back of your bus is going to swing over into the, their lane three feet before it draws back in if you crank the wheels over. And you need to know that when you drive the bigger vehicles. Uh, let's see. And I don't even know about the 55 footer um, Greyhounds because I will, I have no interest in those. Uh, they're this too much. All right, uh, let's see. Well, that's the other thing. If you got a trailer, you got a 15 foot vehicle and a 20 foot trailer that makes you 35 foot long. But the nice thing about a trailer, you have a split right there in the middle so you can make that turn. You don't have to consider more of it. Um, let's see. Hello. Uh, go RV. Um, anyhow, so uh, the other thing to consider is weight on the larger vehicles. The ambulance, well, let's see. I got 360 but cannot edit my computer too old. The one I'm uh, on now is from two. Oh, Blue Fire. Yeah, 360 is, uh, they like new computers. You can do it and run proxies on it, but, um, yeah, it killed my laptop from 2012. It's, uh, it does not do any graphics no more. So it sucks. Okay, let's, uh, talk about weight. So, every vehicle, RV, trailer, ambulance, bus, they all have a max weight. And hi, Jody. This apparently is a good time to do a live stream. I was wondering if anyone would sh actually show up. Um, anyhow, so weight of the RV to consider um, to it's either twenty five thousand one pounds or twenty six thousand one pounds. I think it went up to twenty six thousand one pounds uh, of weight you can have in a single. Um, non-towing capacity RV or Class A before you are required to have a CDL. Now there is a lot of discussions and debate whether you need to or not have a, a CDL to drive like a, a school bus converted. Um, really as long as you got your school bus converted and it, the title changed over, this is how it was explained to me, as long as the title says school bus on it, it does not matter uh, whether you're driving it for personal or not, and you have to have a CDL. If you have a school bus that you title as an RV, you are okay as long as you're under that weight. Um, that being said, um, the actual weight of the ambulance max out is 14,050 pounds. That's the maximum weight of the chassis that can handle. Whenever you get close to that weight, parts start wearing out fast. It, it starts breaking, and you don't want it to break. Hi, Sean. I'm Sean. Well, thank you, Sean. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, cool. Uh, I'm enjoying this. So, anyhow. This, uh, so the ambulance max at uh, please tell the minimum computer needed to edit 360. Um, Blue Fire, Flyer, um, I built my computer two years ago to do it. I have roughly a MSI Z90, I think. It's a, it's, I spent $1,500 on the computer to build it, but... Um, Basically, it has a uh, i7, uh, is it 9700? I, I could tell you specs if I can think of it, but uh, um, look at a high-end gaming computer or a high-end workstation um, would be my best bet. I think the equivalent was um, probably a 
and I hate to say this, a $2,000 computer starting out, um, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, $1,500 in parts on this computer, actually it's closer to $1,600, I'm actually considering doing some upgrades to this, but that's why I went with a desktop to do 360. But I also run Adobe and Premiere and Adobe Photoshop, and those are really hard on your system. Uh, supposedly, we can edit on your phone. I, yeah, it's, yeah I, I just much rather do it on the, the PC. It, it has its uh, moments on it, so... But I, I do enjoy 360. It is a, a joy thing to do. Where did I learn how to weld aluminum? Um, I practiced a lot. I watched YouTube videos. I got a book on how to weld aluminum. And I failed a lot. A lot. A lot. I have failed a lot. Um, but through failure and constant failure, you learn a little bit every time. And uh, I got a prime weld, uh, prime weld welder, TIG welder. And, uh, he, you know, if you watch enough videos, you kind of get an idea of what looks right, and what sounds right when you're welding. So if you're welding, you can actually, it sounds clean. How am I going to say it? They say it sounds like bacon, but it's not like bacon. It's a nice clean even sound and yeah you just kind of learn I mean it, it's trial and error I got hit by what my welder the other day I was changing out the tongue skin because I, I still drop my um, tongue skin then I, I can't say it I dropped it in the welding pool and mostly it's because I'm in an awkward position so and I have to pull them out and replace it, so otherwise it makes the weld this void. It, it messes up the weld so much that it's just worth it to do a proper job. But whenever I was doing it, I accidentally hurt, hit the on-off switch and uh, gave myself a little shock. Um, it was not fun, <laughs> um, to say the least. But, you know, it was not dangerous either. So, all right, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, we did wait... Okay, yeah, let's talk about the systems. I actually don't have anything written down on this. I have a couple of videos that are going to come out talking about some of the ways that I um, experiment with stuff. So if you're going to build your own rig and... My nose getting dry. Um, if you're going to build your own rig, you need to know what you're putting in your rig. Um, the next rig uh, video coming out is regarding how to fireproof your rig and uh, among other things uh, fuses help fuses help a lot having proper fuses all the way through not just the fuses at your battery because you can have a catastrophic fuse there but every time you drop the wire down to a different size you need to have a fuse on it because that big wire or that big 300 amp uh, yeah Sherry good night. Yeah, it's it's late. Oh, you must be on East Coast. Uh, Eleven o'clock still here, but uh, you guys have a bye bye. Okay, so hello, Yana. Ah, uh, so anyhow, so when you start out at the batteries, you had that big fuse, that three hundred amp fuse. And you go out and you pair it off to your DC system and your AC system. Your AC system. Um, the way I run it, I, I actually use that fuse as part of my AC inverter system. It'll go through a shutoff switch and go to my inverter, and that goes to its own breaker panel. And then you go to your DC system, and you pair off from your switch loads to your non-switch loads, and that should drop into another um, fuse box, and you size the fuse appropriately for whatever wire you're pulling off of it. Um, biggest thing to prevent fires. Okay, anyhow. So... Uh, insulation. Insulation is a, another one. What kind of insulation do you put in it? And I have been struggling with this because <clears throat> Orville Roth, the subject of wiring, do you know what CCA wiring is? Um, not quite sure on that. 
cold, cranky Nance, that I don't think that's what you mean, uh, go ahead and tell me. Um, not quite sure. Anyhow, while we're waiting for that, um, insulation. Um, so I had a plan to do insulation with two sheets of rigid foam and some epoxy in the middle of it to hold it all together and I was going to make custom shapes with it with a rock wool underneath it. However, without spoiling too much, you'll find out that's changed a little bit. But uh, rock wool is fireproof. It's not very, people don't like it because it's overpriced. But, um, and, you know, they'll make stuff. I mean, I can, I researched this forever. I was trying to find out if there was any possibility asbestos could have actually been inside the rock wool. I cannot find any research anywhere that it would be in there. So I had it in the bus. And I'll, honestly, I like the insulation. Um, there's this discussion about um, hemlock wool, I think is the name of it. It's a wool from a lamb for insulation inside your van build. And I was really closely looking at that. However, um, I'm probably not going to go with it. Just, it's not what I want. I want a fireproof rig. Or not fireproof, but highly fire resistant rig. Um, and hang on, let me yeah, get back to that. Uh, over uh, copper coated aluminum. Oh yes, yeah, that copper coated aluminum wire. Beware, very common used. Usually sold on eBay and is junk. What do you think of mini splits and RVs? Okay, well, let's uh, um, go back to the copper coated aluminum. I have heard of that. Um, yeah, so if you're going to use aluminum wire, you need to increase your wire size by at least one to two sizes. And the biggest problem with aluminum wires is the oxide coating you get on the aluminum. Uh, it creates a high resistant load. And anywhere that has that uh, coating, if it's between two points touching, it can get really hot, hot enough to burn down your rig, or burn the wires apart. Um, it is not good stuff. Try to find real copper. I'm hoping to be able to reuse the copper wire out of the ambulance. It's from 2000 and it should all be 100% copper. But I don't know. That's why I got a wiring nest out there waiting to be used. Um, what do you think of mini splits and RVs? Um, I've heard mixed feeling, or I've heard mixed opinions about mini splits. Um, basically, they, it is true. I've heard that they are not meant to be in a mo mobile vehicle. That being said, I'm still going to put a mini split in mine, and uh, I will probably put a bunch of uh, the the main thing is the copper line. You want to make sure that copper line is loose, and you want to make sure you have at least a uh, at least one, maybe two loops in the line, and either loose flex or you can just let's see if I'm saying this right. You don't want it flexing a lot because copper can work harden, but you also want to give it a little bit flex. Uh, Mainly because I have aluminum and copper and they expand at two different points. I imagine I will cinch it down somewhere along the lines. But you just don't want that line work harding because it will break on you. Um, it's the same thing with um, copper propane lines. Um, I didn't run copper propane. I actually run in cast iron uh, propane lines in the bus. And then had those standard household uh, shutoff, and then the flex line that would actually kill it if the flex line ever broke. And I never had a problem with that. So, um, and as far as all the wiring goes in the AC line, excuse me, your best bet with the uh, AC wiring is to go get an extension cord or something similar, a heavy duty extension cord, and run that in either a conduit in your walls or in your walls around a fireproof insulation. Um, because uh, a vehicle going down the road, bouncing and everything, you know, it's like a 
7.0 earthquake um, all the time. Um, 7.0 earthquake and it can actually work harder than and cause uh, faults in the wiring and uh, break the wiring. So if you get the stranded wires, and I'll get to your comment here in a second, if you do stranded wires, it's going to handle the vibrations a lot better uh, long term uh, for the life of the vehicle. That's if you're making it yourself. Uh, RVs have the, uh, let's see. RVs have a different uh, standard. Um, most RVs are designed for temporary living, like a, if you buy a manufactured RVs before 2008. Now everything after, two, almost everything after 2008 is designed for a little bit more use and more full-time living. But if you get an 80s model, they're not designed for full-time living. You're going to be replacing stuff on them. Um, just my personal opinion. It's not guaranteed. You may get, you know, two years out of it and not have to replace anything. But, uh, my experience with them is, yeah, well, I build my own stuff, so that's why. All right, let me see what this comment is. Uh, Blue Flyer. It seems like most other YouTubers like to, like, SV Seeker, the, So, the most you, most, you like most, I like to like SV Seeker. So, you follow Andrew of New York and other builders. Um, I'm a maker, um, as far as that goes. I like building stuff. It's the one thing that I really um, missed while I was traveling around. I like traveling, but I, I it's part of the reason I decided to... Um, Sorry, I gotta get your nose. I I sold the bus so I could build me a new one. Um, part of the reason I sold the bus to build a new one is the bus worked great for the two weeks at a time for parking, but I I missed a lot of opportunities of museums and uh, um in in town stuff that I wanted to see that I couldn't because there was not parking nearby to leave the bus. I had a pet with me at the time for, oh, sorry, the first, um, oh, this is, year and a half I had Jesse with me, and if you guys don't know, Jesse was a lovely, lovely husky, um, she was a, a wonderful dog, but not for me, we have found her, we found her a new home, um, uh, two summers ago, with a uh, husky trainer and the other one, and they adopted her, and she's working out great. Um, she had too strong a will for me, and a stubbornness that, she, even if she knew it was good for her to listen, she would intentionally not listen. And I consider myself a pretty good dog trainer. It's just she she broke me. So, anyhow, I had her with me in the bus, and any time I left her home alone, she would chew up something in the bus. Yeah, she is an absolutely beautiful puppy dog, and I loved her to death, but her and Nomad Traveling or Nomad Life was not for her. And uh, so, yeah, I have been looking for other dogs, but I will not get another pet uh, for me until I get this done and some more projects done. Um, if I do get another one, um, it'll be a smaller dog. I was thinking about the cats, but the, the cats are grown up here. They like it here, and I think it'd just be too much of a change to put them in a vehicle. So they're, they're the cats here, and they're taking care of our mice right now. So that's good. All right, let's see. What else are we going to be talking about? I just wait. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, so he's on insulation. And um, so rock wool is my choice of insulation for sound deadening and fireproof. And I've actually used rock wool in some of my kilns, um, casting aluminum and some other things. So I feel safe and confident if something ever did happen, I would have a fireproof barrier and literally fireproof. You can take a torch to it and hold it there and it'll, it'll just sit there and glow. And then of course I got the aluminum outside. Um, 
the main thing, it's not like armies go up all the time. I mean, there are accidents that happen, and it's actually horrible, horrible to lose your rig um, to a fire. But um, tires. So one of the things I was told and believe, if you blow a tire in a large enough vehicle, you may not know you blew a tire. Um, Um, Sean, uh, I will not be putting a vapor barrier, um, mainly because the rock wool is, uh, waterproof. I mean, you can sit there and drop it and the water will float and, uh, I don't see a point in it. It doesn't support mold growth. The aluminum doesn't, sm uh, support mold growth. Um, there will be, um, I haven't quite decided, but there'll probably be some sort of, uh, Luan between the outside and inside. And there's also going to be a layer, probably two lasers or two inches of rigid foam on the inside to give me a um, thermal bridge. Uh, basically, where all the supports are, the rock will be in there to help absorb the low end sound. Um, I had four and a half to five inches of rigid uh, uh, great, uh, great stuff with rigid foam in the walls of the bus. And it had a great high end. Uh, noise canceling that at the low semi sound would always come through um, it is s severely reduced but you could still hear it so I'm going to try a double sided approach to it rock wool sound deadening rock wool on the two inches in between the aluminum frame and the inside and then another two inches of uh, rigid foam on the inside and uh, there's some fireproofing material I'll do on the rigid foam. Um, you'll see in the next video. But basically, let's see. Basically, I'll have the outside aluminum skin and frame separated from the living compartment. So I shouldn't have as much heat transfer from the inside to the outside, being that aluminum is a great conductor of heat. And uh, so we'll go with that. All right, let's see what's happening down here. Um, I gave up pet because they break my. I gave up pets because they break my heart. Don't live long enough, so I just film wildlife now at 55. Yeah, losing pets suck. Um, whenever I traveled before. Well, while I was out, I actually lost a one of my first puppy dog. Um, his name was Rascal. He was a German Shepherd Norwegian Elkhound mix. He's a very good dog. He listened very good, except for when he didn't, which is why he stayed back here. Um, needless, without getting into too detail, uh, we lived on a farm for a little while. He was going to go get a pickup truck. The pickup truck did not stop. He ended up spending six months in the hospital. Uh, no, not six months. Um, six nights in a hospital on ICU. And he made it. He lost a limb. Um, he's had a hard life as far as this, the genetic lottery. He had a um, a rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, he's a really good dog. However, he spent most of his time here at my parents' place and did not do well with apartments. So that's when they took him, took care of him back in like 2000, uh, let's see, 10 or so. And by the time I moved out of the apartment, he was more their dog. Or he was, yeah, he was more their dog than my dog. So he stayed here. And whenever, um, my parents had both Jesse and uh, Rascal at the same time. They could not handle Jesse, so I got Jesse. Um, middle of the build process, so I did not get a chance to really spend as much time as she needed to be trained properly. Uh, partly why I'm not getting a, be or getting a puppy dog now until I have time to dedicate to them for the proper training they need. But, uh, yeah, Rascal passed, um, and he's a really good dog. And honestly, I've had a, a pet my whole life.
but uh, he's one of those dogs I actually had trained to a point that I could walk him off leash. A cat could jump up in front of us and run, and he would still wait for permission. It's very good. Um, I'm very impressed with that. But anyhow, let's uh, move back on to the, the build and some of the other stuff. Um, it is an interesting title, but um, part of the stuff you need to know to be a nomad or uh, be out or... Oh, great. The spam messages are coming again. Has anyone else noticed that they get email message and group texts of spam? I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. I keep marking them, but they are just horrible. Anyhow, so uh, the walls, I have, um, I have a piece of live edge lumber in there that I'm going to use for the countertop in the ambulance if it doesn't warp hor horribly bad. Um, I get them at 6 a.m. when I'm sleeping. Oh, man. I hate it when they come through. I have a, I think this goes on silent mode, though, whenever um, we're there. Or whenever. I don't know. I just mark them all as spam. I'm hoping that I'm not in a group chat with friends and somehow mark them as spam, too. But I go through and check it every now and again. It doesn't have anyone's number on it, so... Hey, raised by roof. Hey guys. Um, anyhow, we're going back to the build. So the windows, uh, consideration windows uh, for this rig, the bus had double pane low E windows, uh, made or manufactured from the glass inside the ambulance. Or God, I must be getting inside the bus. It's the original school bus. <laughs> you fucked a doctor by mistake. <laughs> Hi, channel. How long do you think it will take to finish up your RV build? Um, hopefully, the RV build will get faster and faster. The biggest thing was I've been fighting wind here and cold and holidays. And, yeah. Uh, anyhow, so today I had the first wind-free day for like a week, and I got a lot done. Um, I'm also changing out some stuff, but... Mainly, I need no wind so it doesn't blow off, blow away my shielding gas for the aluminum. Because this weld's horrible if I don't have that. And I have a tarp over it. It doesn't do much. Basically, I just need enough wind-free days to actually get it built. And then I can really get moving farther forward on it. So, I give myself a year. It'll probably be midsummer before it's fully done, hopefully. Um, I have the... I have a hot water system that I've been building out of a diesel instant hot water thing. It will come out in another video of kind of the setup I'm doing. Uh, basically, it's I have no clue if it's going to work good or not. Um, it's all an experiment. But the the thing is, is I'll have radiant floor. I'll have uh, engine heat. I'll have uh, hot water, drinking hot water. I'll have a way to pull off. Uh, heat from the engine and put it back in the heating system and I should also have a way to I have an extra heat exchanger that I'm either going to use as a recycling hot water thing or as an external hot water input output I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it um, and I might overlap it but it's all isolated and it's uh, hopefully is not a giant waste of money um, let's see what else solar panel video is going to be coming out soon. I did a comparison between uh, the two Renogy, the uh, $100 Renogy 100 watt panels and the $170 Renogy uh, Midnight panel or Eclipse panel. Um, that was very interesting actually and you guys will have to stay for that. Hang on, let me catch up on comments, comments here. Uh, oh yeah, okay, let's see. You may find a soulmate, a dog or cat, when you're on the road who will want to be with you and want to travel. Oh, I hope so. You know, dog, cat, or person. I'll take soulmate on person, too. So, anyhow, thank you, Leanna. Uh, uh, hit that like, people. Yes, please hit the like, please. Um, let's see. Raised by Wolf, Susan and Ken. What haven't you been fighting? Right, build out. 
Oh, what haven't I been fighting? Yeah, um, it, it is fun. I'm glad it's looking good from you guys. I've been really stretching out my videos on here because really I've just been twiddling my thumbs waiting for the weather to get nice and, uh, of course, holidays and everything else. And it's just I haven't had that much to film um, other than me just sitting there twiddling my thumbs waiting uh, for the weather to get good. But I'm hoping to actually start put, putting out more videos. Uh, part of the reason the live streams have been uh, lacking lately. And, yeah, you know. You know, you guys see. So, let's see. Uh, I say no to pets now. After seven years, no pets. My heart is better now. I used to get upset. Yeah. It's better to spoil other people's pets anyhow. Um, that being said, if you're in the nomad life, or you're out traveling around, please ask the owner's permission before you give them any food. Because if that pet gets sick, they're up all night outside with them too when their pet gets sick. So it's very important, more so important to uh, um, practice good courtesy for other people's pets. Because they can't let them out at night, especially in the desert because the coyotes are bad out there. Um, let's see. Especially if you have a small dog, or any dog at all, you don't want to let it roam alone. The coyotes will actually, I've heard, I don't know how accurate, the coyotes will actually bait the dog out and then the pack will attack. So you definitely want to keep an eye on them. Not to fear, uh, make you guys scared of it, because there's all kinds of uh, bad things. Well, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to keep this close. It's not all kinds of bad things, but there's a lot of things you need to keep track of, especially if you go to the desert southwest um, on stuff. Excellent, 100%. Ask to feed pet anything, etc. Yes, yes, um, anything, because they have allergies and everything else. And I've done a full night with my pet trying to, you know, and they're sick and you're miserable and you're stuck outside and sometimes it's cold and out there. And if you're set up in your campsite, you're kind of your own uh, independent self because you're not going to go into town and find a vet at night. Not to mention you're going to have to pack up your whole camp or your RV and go, which is another good thing about having a trailer because you can leave your trailer there and you just drive into town. So just saying yeah my 1974 my cat got eaten by a coyote oh god blue fire uh, i guess are you well i don't know where you're at but yeah the coyotes here are still bad that's the one thing i found everywhere i've been coyotes are everywhere they're not just in the desert southwest they're here they're up in the pacific northwest they're in nevada they're in utah they're California, um, yeah, they're everywhere, and they're not afraid of people, um, actually, we have more than a dozen dogs that come in to the property where I'm at here, and, uh, well, thank you, Leona, for the road, oh, thank you, I appreciate that, the road piggy, piggy bank, um, so, well, let's see. Now, now I get my train of thought going. Um, okay. So, anyhow. Thank you. I do appreciate it very much. And what else? Okay, so Desert Southwest. Um, so, news media. That was your first pet uh, lesson in 1974. Yeah, I mean... The desert is wild. Um, my pet, when I had Jesse, found a jumping chula. Did you see a lot of snakes in the desert? Only twice did I ever see a rattlesnake. And, well, yeah. Uh, okay, so rattlesnakes under your rig is not... Um, it's not a myth. Um, it, it can happen. People put rope lights around their rigs. It's supposed to keep them away. 
My suggestion is put a light underneath there, one of them solar lights pointing underneath your rig so it comes on anytime there's movement. And get a stick and kind of drop the stick down first before you walk out. Um, I wasn't worried about it in the bus because it was so high up. But I, what I think the snakes are coming to is they're coming underneath vans. And because your van is putting off heat because your living space is heated, they're looking for that warmth. And, you know, air leaks come straight down from, even if it's cold outside, it's warmer in your van. That cooler air in your van comes straight down your opening. And there was a couple instances where people, was it last year, well, one person got uh, bit and they made it to the emergency room. It took a while to heal. And uh, another person had a dog that alerted them to the snake being under the rig. And that was actually um, taken away. Um, uh, I don't know his name, but everyone refers to him as Cherokee, and he came and picked it up and took it off into the boonies, and uh, I think it was okay. I have no clue on that. Okay, let's see. Raised by wolves, we have coyotes in town. Cougars and bears have been seen. The bad part of uh, building into their homes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Uh, overpopulation is actually encroaching on the living environments of a lot of the wild animals. Supposedly there's a cougar around here. Um, I haven't seen it, although I did just see a really big uh, track about that big with no claw marks, so it might have been a cougar uh, or a small uh, uh, bobcat. We have a deer feeders next door. We live on five acres here. Ten acres next door that no one's been living in. They're selling the ten acres. And we live on a, uh, there's a creek that goes through the city right behind me and it leads straight out to county. So it's where all the wildlife comes up. But we have deer on the property by the tracks. We have dogs and I'm not sure they're wild dogs. We have the coyotes too, but we have a lot of uh, neighborhood strays that come over here. Um, my friend Art has been visiting me for a while and he says every dog in there neighborhood comes in here and makes the rounds around the property um, so you gotta keep an eye out for that but uh, I forgot the train of thought on that but basically I don't usually do anything outside here um, we are in city but uh, yeah like I said the wildlife comes into town because we're encroaching on their living environments so they learn to come into town so we all get to living together uh, speaking of weird wild animals, um, the only time I've ever heard raccoons make um, noises other than the, the typical noise is here on the property when they didn't think anyone was around and they was playing around. And they make some very weird and creepy noises, but they're uh, um, fun. Uh, we also have skunks, possums, which I like possums, raccoons, critters, a lot of hawks. And uh, I haven't seen any snakes here. Anyway, side, side part. Um, let's see. And the coyotes have run through our yard. Even, it's been a while though. Coyotes running through your yard. Do you guys get to see them run through your yard? Oh, we had a coyote. We think a coyote. Um, Hunter is my roommate's dog, which is my best friend. Um, that I've known forever, but um, he's here, and we thought he he broke his or hurt his shoulder or something, and my friend's been letting him out with no leash on the property, which it's open. We haven't fenced all the way around, but uh, uh, we think a coyote came through the property because he he was out there using a the restroom and she was watching him because keep an eye. This dog comes running through the fence straight back, not looking our way, and. He takes off after her, so Aaron takes off after him and caught up to him uh, at the back of the trees, which is, was it 900 yards? So about three quarters of the way back, so about uh, two blocks away, so about 200 yards away or something like that. I don't know. Um, we have a long and skinny property, so and she thinks it's a coyote, but yeah, it's probably long story short. Um, let's see. Oh, it's definitely windy. 
Thursday in the northwestern Oklahoma. Yes, it was. And I was out there trying to work in that. Um, I, uh, we had some really bad wind gusts. The, the main uh, emphasis, uh, uh, the main point to get it sheeted and back up is because storm season, once winter gets over it here, we get storm season, which means we get wind storms, hell storms, and not anything that I really want to expose to. So I'm putting a bigger push on getting it sealed up. Uh, people are better, live longer, and smarter. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are definitely living longer and getting smarter, I hope. Um, that, yeah, that sounded sad, actually. Um, most people are very smart um, and very wise. Um, okay, so let's see where are we at. Okay, so ambulance design nomadness, um, whatever. Um, so I still plan on doing at least a thousand watts on top of the ambulance as far as solar goes. I was going to do 16, 1700, and I still might do it, but um, yeah, that goes back to the whole sol solar uh, video that I just made earlier today. And yeah, you'll find out more on that. that as I was really surprised on that, and it actually caught me off guard. And I was just. Yeah, I thought there was a wizard somewhere giving me power. Anyhow, we'll we we'll, won't touch on that too much farther. Um, that's to come. Uh, yeah. All right. So, fireproofing insulation. Um, okay. So let's uh talk about the height. Um, part of the reason I went so high in this. Um, most RVs are as tall as 11 feet tall but that space is taken up by vents and air conditioning units and uh, the ambulance I decided to put the air conditioner on back with a mini split um, whether it works or not it's still to be seen I hadn't even bought the unit yet but uh, basically it gives me that extra height up there as living space and um, if you build a space yourself you'll find that the best and easiest way to make this space seem bigger is to raise the roof or make more headroom or put a skylight in. Um, all that will make the space seem way bigger versus just walking around where you can barely clear the top of your head or not clear. So Anyhow, let's see. I'm still trying to figure out how to get a soaking tub in that, uh, that ambulance. I haven't decided if I'm going to make, build, oh, excuse me, tire, hmm. make, or, uh, how tall am I? Um, I'm six foot three. I actually have over nine foot ceilings in the ambulance right now, I think. I don't know, I can hang from the ceilings and, uh, dangle there, so completely, um, but I'm going to lose a foot plus probably three to four inches in insulation, maybe six inches all in all in the insulation. So, let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to put all my tanks in the sub floor, the radiant floor heating for the sub tanks, batteries, and uh, waste tanks are all going to be heated so I can go into wintertime environments and uh, not be tied to the desert southwest. I would like to do some snow camping. And this is part of the reason I want to convert it to four-wheel drive is I would like to go up into the snow. Um, the bus could do it. It's just my tanks were outside. They were not heated, so I'd have to empty my tanks and watch how much water I put down there. And I actually did do two winters in Oklahoma in the bus with no tank heat whatsoever. I did have it, you know, just going straight through the rig and out to the drainage. But uh, I found out my PEX line freezes at 3 degrees and 6 degrees. Um, and it was very nice because all you had to do is thaw it out and your PEX was ready to go. Um, this one, I'm still not quite sure how big a water tanks I'm going to have in it or uh, what kind of water because I like the glacier water so I got to figure out some way to do that but 
That's a ways away. Okay, we're well talking about Windows. Windows in the bus were double pane low E windows. They were the original glass from the bus cut into uh, frames. There's literally this two, there's a quarter inch glass, one on one side and one on the other side, and they space with a three inch uh, gap in between. I dropped a distillant in there, which is a um, moisture absorber, and it was actually cocked around it, and it was made where they both slid open and slid closed. It's still wood windows, which uh, wood windows truly, if you make your own, they have their own love-hate relationship. They require a lot of maintenance, uh, especially if you want them to look like wood and not paint over them. And they ha tend to expand and contract with the moisture depending on where you go north or south. Um, besides that, I um, dropped a tint in my windows. More, of t I wanted low E, and low E came in as a tint. The only tint they actually had for the low E was this uh, reflective tint. Um, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, some people that camped around me liked it or didn't like it. But um, anyhow, to drop low E on it, if you drop any ones inside the windows, you had to put it on the inside part of the outside uh, panel. That way anything that came through the glass would bounce out and not uh, heat up your space in between your glass um, double pane area. So... Anyhow, that was um, very energy efficient. Uh, I, like I said, I had a love-hate relationship, mainly wood expansion and contraction, and among other things. Uh, this one I'm looking at buying some portholes, um, big old 15-inch aluminum portholes for it. Okay. Uh, can you tell what the headspace above your bed will be like, or would you have a window or skylight above your head or is the bed at floor level okay so the bed has not been made the bed platform is going to be above the cab but separated I'll have about two inches between the the bottom of the bed and the top of the cab um, the main reason for that is I didn't want to integrate the cab into the design at, well I wanted to do as little as possible because cabs are very hard to insulate they have a very poor R value in them, and if I can cut the cab out, I can bump up the efficiency inside the tiny space uh, so much better. So it will look like a standard Class C with a bed over the top, except for it should be taller. Um, I think I'll have three to four feet in there. Well, there'll be more than three. Um, but it depends on the bed because I'll be buying a queen bed just for it, and I do plan on having a queen size bed up there. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a design where I can uh, either have a skylight up there or a roof opening and that's just maybe it's I haven't figured out a good solid design what I'd like to do is instead of having a roof deck on the roof because you mostly stargaze at night anyhow and that's the only reason I need a roof deck is if I could just lay in bed and sleep under the stars and I know that sounds weird and everything else, but I really like sleeping under the stars. And sleeping in my own bed under the stars would be awesome. So if I can make some sort of way for the top of the roof to slide out of the way, or lift out of the way, or fold out of the way, or even just have a skylight there, that would be awesome. It really, really would be. Especially in places like Death Valley, or uh, uh, Valley of the Gods, and uh, all the other great stargazing places that there are. I will say having a deck up high away from the ground critters to stargaze is great by yourself if you're out by yourself. Um, okay, let's see if we can get caught up on this. Uh, sounds like a cool RV build. Porthole windows. Awesome. Are you going to paint the outside? If so, what color? Um, so I'm going to try to do a roll on bed liner on the outside. And I don't know what success I'll have with it, but uh, the main problem with doing anything with aluminum is the oxide coating. You have to break that off there and get it done within eight hours, they say, for welding. So I'm going to keep that 
eight hour mark as far as doing paint so I'll probably have to rough it up and put it in um, I've also got um, an epoxy sealant that I'm using to put the metal on um, I, uh, on the outside and it seems to be really successful but it requires me to knock off all the uh, oxide on the aluminum um, the portholes yeah I've been wanting to do portholes for a while it's just been trying to find what I want within the price range that I want so and I don't know if I'm gonna have them throughout or just have them in key spots uh, I don't want to spend a fortune on windows and the portholes I'm looking at, I will have to build the inside uh, of the ring that meets the outside, so it'll have a little indent on it. And I'm thinking about using wood and epoxy, but I haven't decided. I might end up welding a ring around it and dropping it in that way. I also lose a little efficiency by using aluminum uh, windows because I'll have the inside porthole that opens here. I'll have the space with the insulation. I'll have a big opening there. A screen out here somehow so and I get to manufacture that plus by the portholes so I I gotta decide all right let's see if I can get caught up here um, uh, doesn't it sound weird I love that idea so much oh sweet thank you Leona uh, say no to paint unless you on 1951 house um, yeah, I did paint on the bus. I did a rust oling and paint on the bus, and I could repaint it to touch it up. I'm so over painting. I am so over painting. So, if I can do a rubberized bed lining on it, which it will add a considerable amount of weight, but that weight will also reduce the likelihood of low noises uh, coming through the cab. So, we'll see what we can do there. I'm, I'm hoping I can do a uh, bed liner on the outside, even roll on bed liner. It also helps with the, the bushes because I'm not really kind to my paint jobs. I go in places I shouldn't. I even had my bus down a pipeline road between Dome Rock and Roadrunner Campground. That was a big mistake thanks to uh, that navigation app I was using. But uh, yeah, and I've done that a couple times in the bus. So yeah, this would be nice. All right, let's see. Uh, Cherry. Hello from California. Doing a good doing a Good job with the ambulance. Enjoy watching you. Well, thank you, Shirley. Shirley. Thank you. Um, uh, skylight, stargazing, awesome, really neat ideas. Yes, stargazing in your own bed is awesome. Um, I enjoyed the, the roof deck that I had on the bus. I had an 8-foot by 12-foot long roof deck. It's really too big for... Most people I've ever had up there is three, maybe four people. I had five people whenever I was still here before I went out. But uh, I have to watch the fireworks in the distance, and that's one time. I would much rather leave most of my roof space for solar panels, but I do want options for stargazing. So we'll see if that happens. It may or may not. It may be as simple as instead of a sliding roof off, it just tilts over and opens one side of it. We'll see. Um, the biggest thing is to keep the water out and the wind out. Um, there's a little air gap in the bus that let a lot of, you know, even if it's just a little bitty, you know, opening it and it's cold air, you feel it and you, you hate it. So, let's see. No paint unless you're on 1951 house. Uh, sky light and stargazing. Um, Uh huh. Do you miss uh, the huge bus? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, do I miss the huge bus? Um, kind of. See, if I had the bus, I would have been traveling around Oklahoma. See, if I didn't get the ambulance, um, like I did, and I would have been traveling to all the state parks and not visiting. Uh, I would have been out and not sitting here, but uh, once I moved all my stuff out of the bus into the bedroom, I kind of, uh, my stuff is kind of where I'm at, and that's where I feel comfortable. It just takes a little while. But yeah, it was sad to um, 
it was sad to see it go, but it it was time. And in all truth, I had that bus for eight years. And I bought it in 2012 as a bus, and over the next what, three years, I converted it out. I lived in it full-time for two years prior, prior to traveling. I figured if I found a spot where I could park it for two years, it was the same as rent. I saved that money, and I didn't have to eat, you know. It'd be the same as living in an apartment. And then I finally... Uh, uh, sold it, you know, traveled in it for the last two years and decided that I wanted to downsize. Shirley, green, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, all right, let me just see if I can get caught up on com comments here. Uh, seven gallons a mile? Well, yeah, that was about average. Yeah, I'd get eight miles a gallon. Uh, not seven gallons a mile. No, no, no. I was at least getting 8 miles a gallon, anywhere from 5.66, which is the absolute worst I ever got, to uh, 8 or 9. And there's that random weird uh, mileage that I got when I was coming off the mountains and coasting that I got 18 miles a gallon. But I just threw that one out because there's no way that I could have got 18 miles a gallon. Um, I think there's just something weird about it. that uh, um, The bus did fine over the mountains. And... It's not a sports car. It's my home on wheels, and it, going up a hill, you are uh, put it in a gear that you're not going to overheat it going uphill, that you're going decent speed up, and you keep an eye on that temperature gauge. And if that temperature gauge goes a high or a little bit higher, you need to slow it down until the temperature ga gauge comes back down. Um, the bus... Uh, the bus did roughly 15 miles an hour up those passes in Colorado. It did Wolf Creek Pass about that fast and other things. Let me get cut up. Uh, yeah, I, I had the bus for eight years. Um, a lot of my vehicles that I tend to like, I keep at least eight years. I had my first vehicle, my 1985 Ford F-150 short and narrow four-wheel drive for eight years. And I got that from my uncle, worked one summer to pay for it, uh, did a clutch on it, replaced the wood bed on it, uh, new tires that had those uh, those Dodge rims on a Ford, put a, a 1985's new to you, huh? Well, uh, what's the miles per gallon I get in the ambulance? Well, I think there's something reading wrong. I think I need to do a tune-up on it. Not that I need a tune-up on it. I was getting 10 miles of the gallon, but I was also driving at 75, 80 miles an hour down the road. That's from getting it here to here, or from where I bought it to here, because I bought it up in uh, Utah. And I flew up there, picked it up, and drove it back over the summer. But uh, about 10. I was running the air conditioner all the time, so I'm guessing it's probably 14 to 15. With no air conditioning. Um, I don't know what it's going to do with the modifications because I'm adding about two feet of roof space above where it's at. So I'm going to have wind resistance there. And it depends on how the bed platform gets shaped. So let's see. Don't forget to thumbs up. Uh, I can't hear you. Nice air. Nice air. Nice air. Oh, yeah. Nice air. Nice air. <clears throat> The length of the ambulance. Uh, the length of the ambulance is roughly 23 feet bumper to bumper, but the back bumper sticks off about a foot, so 23, 24 feet. Um, I'm going to actually end up removing the back bumper. And um, the one thing... Oh, oh boat. Okay. Okay, I have no clue what you're talking about, but I'm sure you'll... you'll you'll explain um my brain's apparently just not in the location so the um the back of the ambulance once i get it all sheeted up it's not going to stay flat back like it is i'm going to drop a, a a bump out on it i think and it will be where my mini split will be sitting uh, a honda generator underneath that that i can start up and run while i'm going down the road with gas a couple spare gas uh, tanks a bicycle if I can get it in there maybe a motorcycle don't know uh, 
probably e-bike for sure. Don't know if I'll take the 79 Honda out or not. <clears throat> and an outside trash can. Because, believe it or not, you need an outside trash can. Um, something you can throw either dog poop bags in that's not in your living space. Um, that was one of the biggest things I found that you need outside space. You wouldn't think, but it is very handy to have. So for stuff you don't want on the inside, and then maybe a place to put wet stuff or anything like that. Let's see what's going on here. Cherry green, I'm not sure exactly how you're going to put things in. Going to create a space uh, between the floors. Yes, yeah, so the, um, Shirley, um, the roof raise was double, um, had two purposes. For one, it was designed to give me extra head space, but I went at least the 16 inches above that, and I'm actually going to take what's currently the floor and make it my subfloor, and insulate that and put my tanks on top of that and build me a false floor on top of it so I have all my tanks inside. Underneath the tanks in between the subfloor will be a uh, radiant floor heating system, a uh, PEX line basically, rain with hot water. So I'll heat up my tanks and keep them nice and warm, along with my lithium batteries. <clears throat> this is kind of like the uh, say all end all rigs. I don't want to do another van or another van build after this. So <clears throat> I've taken what I've learned, seen, learned, and decided would be better, and put it in this rig. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have really good ideas out on the road the way they've done it and some are really 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 good and so and some of it's stuff I've learned from the ambulance it's or from the bus <clears throat> Sherry okay got it wow I can't wait to see it I can't wait to see it either I wish this did, did magically be done and I didn't have to do all the work um, uh, there'll be a lot more work in this than the uh the bus but you know I, I imagination's always bigger than you know some, some that you can do so I gotta figure out what's practical uh, what's time worthy and at a certain point travel is more important than the build and um, yeah I mean I like building stuff and I might get enough of it where I can live out of it and go out and explore and come back and do some more the four-wheel drive conversion will probably be that way. It will probably be a year or two before I can actually do it. Um, I was looking at actually doing that, but there's a lot of work involved, so we'll see. We'll see. I gave a boat car, gave up boat car this year. Say no to bad gas mileage and lots of maintenance. Hey, those boat co cars are pretty nice. You don't have to have, have them worry. You get all that space between you and everyone else. It's, it's, it's nice, that's for sure. So, Well, you guys got any more questions or any questions? I'll take some questions if you guys want to give them. I'll answer them as best as I can. I pretty much covered the um no. Oh well. Wow, that's so weird. I got a delay. I got a delay on the video on here, but I got a faster reply on here. This was great and thank you and good night. Alright, sweet. Hopefully you guys got a got a lot of good information from this video. And uh in future videos you get more information. Um Yeah. That'll be fun. I have a friend that's doing a bus conversion and he pulled a lot of wires and he has had a real big mess. The engine doesn't run, nothing works. Oh gosh. That's that's rough. I mean pulling pulling wires out's needed. Um hopefully he has a book for the a manual for the engine so I can find all the engine wires. Um I actually I, when I pulled all the ambulance wires out of it, uh, it did not start. It ended up being, uh, what was it? Oh, it was um, something completely and totally unrelated to the wires being pulled out. 
It was uh, like most engines, they have a, a solenoid that comes on that runs a starter. Well, this has two of those. They have the ignition relay, which turns on the heavier gauge that goes to the solenoid, which turns on that one. And it ended up being the ignition relay. And it was buried underneath a battery and a fender. fender. And it took me a while to find it. But uh, yeah, it's going. It's a very um, learning process. So, anyhow. Love you. Thank you. XMOs. Oh, thank you. All right. I'm going to give you guys about another minute if you guys want to ask any more questions. Sweet dreams, Michelle. Thank you, Leona. Okay. Uh, that's good doing a live stream. I, I like doing live streams. I don't know. What well, I know what I don't do. I don't usually have that much to talk about. And the last two of this has been like, uh, so, yeah. So, so, do you guys like this Saturday night? Do you like it this late? Do you think this is a good time to do them? Yes. Lou says yes. Hi. Hey, I shouldn't. Hi. We're actually fixing them anytime that works for you. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's keep up with the random schedule then, like the random video schedule release. Thank you. Looking forward to more YouTube videos of the RE. Yes. Uh, speaking of which, um, I don't know if you guys will be able to do it. I have my website, purpleperception.com. Um, not saying that anything will happen to the channel, but if anything ever happens to this channel... Uh, I will start posting stuff and updates there. Mm. Also, if you guys are interested in getting my videos first and extra bonus content, which I've been lacking on, I do have a Patreon uh, um, account too if you guys are interested in that, getting videos early. Um, just throwing it out there. Oh, also, hang on. Um, let me be right back here. I got something to show you. Purple question. Um purpleperception.com it should be linked in it hang on I'll be right back so I'll just, just do a little merch plug here oh I was going I I got this because I was planning on dropping it in on a live stream as kind of a merch plug-in. And I just, you know, I have people that actually bought stuff from my Teespring store. And if you're out there and you have bought my stuff, I do appreciate it a lot. Um, uh, and you got some stickers. But uh, I bought this for myself as kind of a test of quality so I know what I was pushing. But, uh... And, uh... When you really have that interesting uh, humor uh, look behind you. <laughs> um, but I thought I'd show you guys it in case you guys are interested in it. It is over on my Teespring store. Um, I'm, I, I'm impressed with it. I've microwaved it and some other stuff. Um, so, you gotta go to the T Teespring store to pick it up. But uh, And if you just want to quietly drink behind you uh it's part of my little humor um but if you guys are interested there's stickers over there also um let's see if all uh, right let's let me catch up on this uh, purple question about that uh, michelle oh i'm so glad i caught you just love you and your videos thank you 96 gal. Nice name. Cool sell, sell. Love your channel 360 for sure. I am glad you guys are enjoying 360. Um, I really am because, uh, yeah. 
We'll, we'll keep them coming as long as we can. I might have to swap out to another camera sometime soon. Uh, I have finicky issues with my current camera, but we'll see. Uh, as long as it keeps working, we'll keep doing it. But, uh, yeah. I love you guys. Take care. Appreciate you. Um, bye.